Before baptism, we can get you into town. Don't get pretty quick. But for all who are present and those who are here, thank you for staying after church. Uh, some people ask the question, why do you baptize people? And it comes from scripture and example. Jesus when he was 30 years of age, was baptized. Uh, Jesus was trying to support John the Baptist, who was saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, John said, I, I don't need to baptize you. You need to baptize me. And, and Jesus said, no, it is proper to do this for uh, the righteousness of God. Now, Jesus isn't baptized. He was baptized, we believe, by immersion. The word literally means dipped and plunged. So we believe he was dipped and plunged in the Jordan River and raised to uh, start his ministry. Then he was tempted of Satan in three years of ministry. But Jesus lived without sin, so he's not being baptized for the same purpose. We challenge people to be baptized. After Jesus died on the cross and was buried and rose again, he gave great commission passages. Uh, one was in Mark where it says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. That's Jesus speaking. So our goal is to preach the story of Jesus, have people believe that as they hear it, and then upon their faith, be baptized soon. And so... Uh, uh, that's been our model from Jesus himself. Hear, believe, repent, confess, be baptized. You saw in the sermon on the day of Pentecost. Uh, that's the 50th day after the resurrection. What Peter and those apostles did to the crowds from every nation um, was what we repeat to every nation now. Uh, Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, he was put on the cross. He died. He was buried and rose again. Um, of course, then we add Revelation story. He's coming again one day. Um, so those who heard that message were told to repent, be baptized, every one of you, uh, for the forgiveness of sin. Now, Jesus wasn't baptized to have any sins removed. Um, and really, only after he died that his blood was shed and could remove sin, that's why we get this instruction after the resurrection. So baptism is a part of God's plan as you believe in Jesus. Uh, belief in Jesus moves us to be sorry for sins, to be aware of sin and say, I need forgiveness, I need a Savior. And then uh, with that, speak it, accept it, share it, uh, and then be baptized. And that's why you're coming. There's another example in a scripture uh, where Philip was doing a successful work in a city and the Lord told him, leave that work and go to one road and meet one man. And here's the encounter. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road on the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And we heard a little bit about Gaza, Gaza, man. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch. Ethiopian would be a black man from that nation. Um, so the church quickly is going to be multicultural, multi-nation. The Ethiopian eunuch was an important official in charge of the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go up to the chariot and stay near it. 
Philip ran up to the chariot. He was excited about the opportunity. He heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet, and he asked the question, do you understand what you're reading? And the man said, how can I unless someone explains it to me? So he invited Philip to come in the little chariot and sit with him. And the eunuch read this passage, and it's from the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 53. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before the shear is silent. He did not open his mouth. In humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants, for his life was taken from him? The eunuch then asked Philip, tell me, who is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? And here's my favorite verse. Then Philip began with that very Old Testament passage of Scripture and told him the goodness of Jesus. I, I, I met a Jewish man one time who was selling uh, different Jewish paraphernalia at a Christian convention. Uh, and I asked him uh, how he came to know Christ. He said, well, uh, I wasn't raised in a family that believed in Jesus as the Messiah. But I read the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, and he said, I came to the belief that that was referring to Jesus of Nazareth, that he was one who died for my sins. And so he went against the grain of his family to say, I believe in Jesus. And this man is doing the same thing. He says, as they traveled along the road, they came to some water. So more than talking about Jesus, he probably talked about the plan of being saved by Jesus. And as they came to some water, he said, look, uh, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And so he gave the order. The treasurer gave the order to stop the chariot. Then Philip and both the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. And uh, Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And so the baptism was built on faith in Jesus and built... Uh, by a person who had heard, turning to God, he had been worshiping, he had learned more about Jesus and embraced Christ, and he says, hey, here's some water I need to be baptized. Uh, I, I commend you for taking the initiative and leading the way to say, um, I've heard a little bit about the book of Revelation. I know your grandpa got you to church when you were younger, and now you're saying, for me, I must follow Jesus. And that's such a mature decision. That's such a great decision. One you'll never forget. Would you stand with me and, and before this group right here and make the confession again and then we'll jump into the back of the together. Would you repeat that to me? I believe. I believe. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. He is my Lord and Savior. He is my Lord and Savior. God bless you, Amen. John. Parents or family, do you want to say anything of encouragement to Sean at this moment? He's super proud of him. <laughs> Any friends? We're here, <laughs> We're here for you. <laughs> she always has something to say. <laughs> we, we tire down during church or she'd be up John, it's because of your faith in Jesus that you're standing here to be ready to be baptized. You've learned from Jesus' example. 
Uh, you've learned from the example today that the day the church began upon Christ's commission to go make disciples baptizing, that you come to this point because of your faith in Jesus, you, you're compelled to be baptized. The scriptures promise that uh, you are forgiven of sin. And as you're baptized, I believe, when you come up out of the water, uh, the Holy Spirit becomes a part of your life that guides you even more than he already has guided you to this point. Uh, there's so many blessings. I believe eternal life begins uh, right here and now for you. Um, one passage of scripture says you're buried with Christ, that you might be raised with Christ in his likeness to new life. So we believe you're being born again, born of the water, and God's Holy Spirit. And with that in mind, we praise God. Would you now see? John, upon that confession of faith in Jesus, says to Christ, you're now being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory. Well, Woo! Hallelujah! Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say a prayer together. Andy Ball, would you give a prayer to uh, praise God for rescuing Sean? Heavenly Father, thank you for today and thank you for this opportunity to come and witness Sean's baptism. Lord, we uh, I've known him pretty much his whole life and this is an awesome, awesome time. Uh, thank you for helping guide him and, and we thank you for his family who's who's helped him along the way come to this decision. Lord, we just ask that uh, that you be with Sean this week and the rest of his life, Lord, as, as he continues to grow and walk with you uh, and uh, help him become more like you as he grows. Uh, thank you again for everything you do. Thank you for the uh, dying on the cross for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us to see the baptism of Sean McDougall. Praise God. You all have a wonderful week, and we will see you next Sunday. Thank you. Okay, honey. All right, then. All right. Love you guys. Okay, honey. All right. Bye bye. This young man is learning right now what's important to this family. That is a beautiful moment right there. Praise God. Is the water cold or no? Is the water cold or no?